fellow bookworms to Tibra's Den. My name is Whitney and I have an another 25 days of bookmas update. I just read Green Rider by Kristen Britton and yeah this is another series that I have no doubt I'm going to love. So um really really excited to talk about this one. I had originally planned on I have the first four books because my husband had the first two. I ordered the third one in the series and then they had chosen my husband and my sister-in-law had chosen the fourth book as part of my 25 days of book miss. So my original plan was to read all of them and then do a video but I'm kind of changing that because I really, really enjoyed this one and I have a lot of other reads that I'm doing this month and I decided that I am going to hold off on the rest of the series. I'm going to go ahead and order the last four books. It's three that are part of the main series and then like a little like novella um, companion novel. But... Yeah, I just, I absolutely love this book and I don't want to rush through the series um, and I don't want to be distracted by other books when I really dive in. And since there are so many books in the series, that's my plan. Um, but again, really, really excited to talk about this. Before I do though, of course, if you could give this video a like, it really does help out the channel. And then don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on a thing. But let's talk about Green Rider. So the premise of this one is you have Kerrigan and she ends up getting suspended from her school and kind of just runs away. She's planning on heading home, but then she comes across a green rider who is dying and implores her to take his message. Green riders are the messengers of the kingdom and he has a very, very important message for the king. And so she ends up kind of taking over on the message and of course dangers and everything ensue. So that's the overall premise. I'll go ahead and go over my compile rating. Um, it's going to be really, really quick because it got tens across the board. So characters got 10, atmosphere got 10, writing got 10, plot got 10, entry got 10, the only one that didn't get a 10 is Logic, and I'll get into that. And then Enjoyment got a 10 as well. Like, I enjoyed everything about this book. And I know I've been pretty liberal with my high scoring lately, but I've just really been enjoying the books I've been reading. Like, I, there's nothing else to it. I've just really, really been enjoying them, which is fantastic. Like... Uh, I mean, I, I love that I'm enjoying them so much. So it did get an average rating of 9.85, which does equal a five-star rating. So really, really quick and easy on that compile rating. Um, if you are interested in learning more about the rating system, the original creator's channel is linked down below. It's G from Book Roast. And then also the channel that I learned about the compile rating from is also linked down there. But yeah, really, really excited for this series as a whole. Um, and I actually recently did a part two on my book haul. I was planning on getting the last four in this series. Unfortunately, the only book that the little independent bookstore had was The Green Rider. Um, and they only had like one copy of this one. So they didn't have the others for me to pick up. And when I went on Thrift Books... They had, like, new and the new prices, and so I do want to look around and try to get a little bit better of a deal on the remaining four books. I think, I don't know when the last one came out, um, but they're obviously a little bit newer, and so that's probably part of why the prices are higher. But, like I said, in this first one, you have Kerrigan as the main character, and she ends up getting into a scuffle with one of the, um, like, Lord's son. Um, and so she comes from a merchant family who is new money, um, and so they're kind of looked down on a little bit. And so she gets in a scuffle. She ends up getting suspended, and, of course, nothing happens to him. And so she decides she's just going to leave, and she ends up taking off. And so she comes across the screenwriter, and he has an important message 
and she ends up kind of getting chosen and agreeing to continue on and take his message. And she doesn't realize at the time all that entails, but there's a lot of danger that she faces going and taking this message, especially being a young girl on the roads and then being a green rider, but she has no training as a green rider. And so there's a lot, a lot of danger. And this whole, you know, fantasy story verse, you basically, there was a long ago war and you have Mornhaven who like used a dark magic. And so he ends up getting confined to this wood and there's a wall that's built around it. Well, in this one, you have the main uh, antagonist is this great shadowed man who ends up breaking the wall um, and allowing that evil to seep out, essentially. Um, and so he's really dangerous, and that kind of is the overall theme, is trying to contain this evil magic that's in this forest. Um and stop it from, you know, coming back, essentially, and, you know, causing issues for the kingdom. So, yeah, the kingdom of Sacaridia, and so, like I said, Kerrigan takes this message, and she goes on her way, and she meets really, really interesting characters along the way. I loved the characters that she met, and what I really liked about this one is, at different points in her journey, there was a very different feel um to the journey as a whole like it was very for not a very long book like this one is uh, about 460 something pages so it's not very long I mean it is a bigger book but it's not the biggest book I've read by any means and it was a quick and easy read but just the amount that was packed into this first book and that quest like feel and how you know, different parts of her journey just had such different feels to it based on her own personal journey, you know, choosing to take this message and choosing to continue to deliver this message despite the danger she faces. Um, it's just, I don't know, it, it was very quest-like in one book, which I don't think a lot of authors can fit that in such a short book. Um, and it is a long series. Like I said, there's eight books. So it is a longer series as a whole, but just what she was able to accomplish in this book was very impressive. And I think she really, really set up the series in a good spot. I will say I didn't particularly like the end of the book, but knowing that is a, it is a series, and knowing, you know, based on, like, the titles of the other books and such, I'm confident, you know, that the ending that I kind of wanted is going to kind of play out in the in the future books. Um, but the ending that happens in this book, I was like, no! <laughs> so, um, which if you read it, you'll, you'll understand. It's not, like, a bad ending. It's just not what I wanted uh, to happen. Um, and so, yeah, I think... I don't know, I'm just very impressed. This is the first time I'm reading this author, and this is, you know, the first book in the series, and I'm just very impressed by it. I really liked kind of the magic system, and you also have kind of that distrust of magic because Mornhaven did such dark magic, so now magic isn't widely accepted, and it's people look suspiciously upon it. The only reason why I gave Logic slightly less than the others and it didn't get a full 10 is there is a political game that they play called Intrigue. Um, and that kind of comes to into play in kind of like the final um, climax of the book. And I'm really not really sure why that was necessary. Like... It left me a little confused and kind of the choice that she made, I liked what she did, but I don't know. It, just, it left me a little confused. Um, and I think the choice that she made just seemed a little bit out of character for her, but 
at the same time, she had a lot of growth throughout the book. So maybe it wasn't so out of character, if that makes sense. But I absolutely loved Kerrigan. I loved, like I said, the other characters that she met along her journey. And it does have other viewpoints in it, but it is mostly following Kerrigan. And the other viewpoints that are in it kind of supplement the story versus jumping around like we see in a lot of other books with multiple viewpoints. is kind of supplementing, supplementing her story and not so much like, you know, two different viewpoints kind of going along with each other, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, I absolutely love this book. And like I said, I am going to hold off reading the rest of them, uh, for a little while. I want to work through some of the other books I have and then get the others in the series so I can just sit down and enjoy the series as a whole because I know I'm not going to want to stop. Like I don't already don't want to stop, but there's already just so much that is kind of dividing my attention. I'm still working on the other land series by Tad Williams, which is a huge dense series. Um, so I just want to really, really take my time and enjoy this. The next one in the series is called First Rider's Call. And this one is, is pretty chunky, um, especially compared to some of the other ones. Like, I'm surprised that this one is so chunky. This is about 639 pages. So, um, over 600 page book. And then we have The High King's Tomb, which doesn't look too bad, but is also over 600 pages. Um, so bigger than I thought, but the writing looks fairly normal. And if it's anything like the first book, either one of these, it's going to go by click. And then the last one that my husband and my sister-in-law had picked out for me is Black Veil. And this one, I mean, it's kind of more in the middle of the road. I'm reading them from least anticipated to most anticipated. And I put this one farther back because of how many books were in the series and how complex it sounded but I mean that was the only reason I did think I would really enjoy these books and I'm very impressed so far anyway like obviously I haven't continued yet but it's not overwhelming which I think a lot of times with high fantasy it can get very overwhelming, which is one of the reasons why I put it farther back, especially, you know, thinking there's a lot of books, it's going to be really complex, it's going to be overwhelming, and that's not the case at all. So that's kind of where I'm leaving it. Like I said, I will eventually be doing the series as a whole. I might actually prioritize this one after I finish the Dresden Files series. Um, I might move this one over to be my Series Saturdays books. Um, so definitely keep an eye out because... I think this is going to be an amazing series and I can't wait to jump back in once I get through some of the other books I need to prioritize. But that is all I have for today. If you've read this author before or the series before, definitely let me know down in the comments. Um, I really would be interested in that. And if you've made it this far and you just want to leave a little comment, um, just leave the word ghost. Um, that is one thing I did really enjoy about the series too is that how the dead play a part in the series um, or at least in this first book as a whole. So um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys here. Happy reading everyone. Bye. Bye.